Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today if you're new around here? My name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video we're talking about sandy soil and specifically the issues we find with sandy soil. Because I feel like it's one of those soils that are underestimated. People always complain about clay, which check out the clay video if you want to know more about how to amend clay soils. But people always give clay the bad rap, but clay soil for the most part, so long as you don't have water table issues, is fixable. Clay soil, or sandy soil, not so much. Very difficult to fix a clay or a sandy soil for a number of different reasons, but we'll get into exactly how we can or cannot do it and how to tell if we have a pure sand soil or if we have a mix that we can work with. Well, the issue with sandy soil is two things. We end up with huge amounts of water loss because the water just rapidly goes through the entire system. We don't have a ton of capillary action, so very little of that is actually suspended in solution for any period of time. So the water it gets is the water it gets. What the plants can take up is what the plants can take up. Anything beyond that, it just seems to fall a bit flat. The second issue with sandy soil is the inability to hold on to nutrients. And this is due to something fancy called the cation exchange capacity, uh, CEC. And so sandy soils have a very low cation exchange capacity because they don't have that negative charge that soil needs to be able to attract the positively charged nutrients that plants need. And therefore we technically, when we fertilize, our plants may not get much of it and the groundwater or the water may get, get a huge majority of the nutrients out of the system. So how do you know exactly how much sand you have in the system? Well, again, it's a two part method, similar to what we talked about in the clay video. We're going to do the rub method on our palm and try to feel if we feel any soapiness or slickness to it. That means we may have a little bit of clay or silt in the system. And then the second method is actually going to be the ribbon test again. So we're going to see how much of a ribbon we can make. If we can't make a ribbon whatsoever, then we have a sandy soil. So we need to amend it. Ultimately, with sandy soil, I highly re recommend thinking about maybe doing a raised garden or a no-dig garden where we're actually putting um, compost or manure on the top of the soil surface mostly because anything we incorporate into the system, because sand gets very, very hot, anyone who's walked on a hot beach or in a desert, gone hiking and felt the sand, sand gets very, very warm compared to a clay soil or a black soil. And so because of that heat, compost and manures and any water that's added ends up resulting in rapid amounts of decomposition. And so when we amend a sandy soil with nearly anything organic, it gets very quickly decomposed and soaked up in the system and then leached right back out again because majority of nutrients are also water soluble. It's the main reason why plants are able to take up quite a few different types of nutrients. So. I highly recommend um, a, a raised bed or a no-dig garden, something of that that sense. I have a whole bunch of different videos on different types of concepts you can try, so be sure to check those out. If I was to amend a sandy soil, what I would do first is I would mix in an inert, nutrient inert, um, biological material. So that could be peat moss coconut coir, vermiculite even, something that's not biological, but vermiculite, anything that holds or retains onto water. So when I mix that into the soil, I'd probably mix it into the probably the first 15-ish inches of that system. You're going to have to replenish this on a very regular basis, but then what I would do after that is I would actually top dress the system with about two inches or more, depending on how sandy it is, the higher content of sand, the higher the amount of mulch you should put on top. But I would mulch it um, or top dress it with a compost or a manure. And then I would actually mulch on top of that because the main goal is actually going to be moisture retention. And the only factor you can control because you can't control the porosity in sand, it is what it is. And you can't control gravity because that is what it is. Unfortunately, I wish I could control it. I would if I could. But because you can't control those two factors, the only factor you can control is something called evapotranspiration. 
So we want to reduce the rates of this and the best way to do that is through top dressing and then mulching on top of that. But like I said, there isn't a lot of fixes for sandy soils, unfortunately. There is one product that is on the market. Um, it's mostly for Americans, unfortunately. I talked to someone from their company, I talked to their soil specialist from their company, and it's called Cinderate. And Cinderite actually has the ability to increase the moisture holding capacity within soil. So that would be something that I would be interested to test in a sandy soil. And I could actually contact their soil specialist to get documents because they do a, a lot of different trials and tests um, R&D in, in their company. So that would be something to look into. Another thing you could try with sandy soil is cover cropping and just trying to make a a denser mycelial web. Now, mycelial webs typically don't do miraculously well in sandy soils, so um, you will have to really, really try to mitigate this or manage this as best as possible. But a cover crop that nitrogen fixes or has a, a very grass type root system, a very webby type root system, that actually would help enormously with sandy soils, both with aggregating that soil, so uh, actually forming conglomerates in the soil, which is very valuable for um, nutrient sequestration, water penetration, all that stuff, holding water in the system. But also the cover crop is going to, again, prevent against that evapotranspiration, which we're trying to reduce. So, and it might fight some systems of gravity and it may ad introduce some level of capillary action as well. So. Something to think about with sandy soil. Unfortunately, I don't have a huge solution to you. My solution is organic material, inert organic material mixed into the first 15-ish inches, a top dress of compost or manure, anywhere from 15 or from two inches to about five inches, depending on how sandy that soil is, the sandier the soil, the thicker that layer should be, mulch, and then cover crop. Those are my, my fixes for sandy soil. They are worse than clay soils, you guys. Feel bad for the sandy soil people. They're so quiet, they never say anything, but you should feel bad for them. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you have a sandy soil, a clay soil, or a loam soil, what your issues with it are with it, and how you amended it. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.